Dr. Rajan, good afternoon. Salonia from Bloomberg TV. Sir, at your first speech uh, at the helm of RBI, you mentioned that you will be gradually looking at a reduction of uh, PSU banks' investment in GSEX. Is there a case for opening the bond markets? Can foreign investors look at that gradually? I think that we've already seen one measure by SEBI to open the uh, bond market since my speech, which was to eliminate the auction that uh, GSEC uh, investors had to had to participate in from outside if they wanted a piece of, of the GSEC market. I think that's a very good move. Uh, I think going forward, uh, we have to see how the limits uh, play out. Right now, those limits are far from being breached, and so there is some room. Uh, there is there is some talk about uh, bringing India into these uh, bond indexes. What needs to be done? Uh, we will have conversations uh, with the international, uh, uh, you know, index agencies, uh, the the entities, uh, some of them investment banks that create these indices. Let us see what uh, what they require. Sometimes they require, uh, you know, uh, a pace. Uh, that we have to examine before we feel comfortable with, but we will have those. We, we will have those conversations. I think a big step forward was SEBI taking off the auction limit, which uh, which was uh, a hindrance to our moving onto the indices. And let us see uh, what it takes to get onto some of those. I may ask a follow-up. Isn't it uh, really a warning from the other side? Because uh, this kind of a U-turn market was being prepared for a few months now, and then. Uh, Fed chairman has completely taken a U-turn. So maybe he's now worried about the economy. Maybe the economy looks much weaker down the line. Uh, perhaps. Perhaps. Uh, 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 and that was always the danger of, uh, of uh, I mean, the danger in any uh, central bank policy is the signals that are read into it. My sense uh, from talking to Fed officials is that they were balanced. They were could go either way. And perhaps weaker data in, in recent days has switched them to a more, uh, um, you know, accommodative stance. Uh, nevertheless, I think the point, uh, and this is a number of emerging market banks, uh, uh, I think uh, central bankers uh, have been talking about, is that, you know, how many times should we prepare for tapering uh, isn't once enough. Uh, and of course, we'll have to prepare once again, but this time, uh, I hope we will be in a much better position, much stronger position, and we don't have to, uh, you know, uh, worry that much. Olga Tellis from the Asian Age. Uh, since the tapering has been postponed and $85 billion will be pushed in every month, do you think it's going to create bubbles in the commodities, currency, and equity markets? Um, you know, uh, um, I, I think that that was the... That was the worry of some Fed governors, including Governor Stein. Uh, and I think they have to watch for that. Uh, I think they will be, uh, I mean, that was one of the bigger factors in ending tapering, the worry that, uh, that it could create those kinds of asset price distortions. Uh, I personally have not been a great fan of, uh, of, uh, of asset purchases, except when markets are broken. I think the QE1 was uh, was a great uh, action in that it fixed the broken mortgage backed securities market. That was important. Uh, since then, I think one uh, can be on both sides of the fence on whether uh, asset purchases have, have done a lot. The difficulty is the counterfactual. What if it hadn't happened? Would we we'd be much worse off? And I think uh, it's very hard to answer that question. But uh, given the price distortions that happen when you buy asset purchases at a large scale, uh, I, I do worry a little bit about that. But, you know, let he who be without, uh, uh, you know, blemish cast the first stone, you know, to some extent our measures have also had some effect on asset prices, and sometimes central banks have to do that. Yep. Sachin Kumar here from Hindustan Times. After this repo rate hike, uh, there will be a negative impact on growth. So, do you plan to uh, revise uh, growth projection? And second, uh, do you do you see uh, more inflows uh, after this repo repo rate hike and subsequent? Uh, dip First, we have to be very careful about immediately associating a repo rate hike to uh, to growth uh, implications. Sometimes, the knowledge that inflation will be lower. Uh, can actually, uh, you know, enhance growth prospects rather than reduce growth prospects. So I don't think you want to immediately conclude that this is uh, negative for growth. 
But also remember that it's clubbed with a substantial reduction in the MSF, uh, which is growth positive. So I, I, I think that uh, um, you know analysts, when they look at this, should weigh the measures together rather than see it as 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 a unilateral uh, issue. I also believe that from a growth perspective, there are other more important factors that are uh, that are going to come into the economy over time, uh, including the projects. Project completion is going to be an important issue. Power generation uh, and the availability of power, uh, on which there has been some positive news, will be an important factor. The curry crop and the, the sentiment in rural areas will be an important factor. So I would not overestimate the effects of a 25 basis point repo cut, uh, repo rate increase. Of course, there is, uh, I mean, our, our um, intent is to signal a stance against inflation, but I wouldn't overestimate the negative effect against growth. Uh, on growth.